One of the things that I commonly come across is the expression of surprise at fatalities and incidents that keep happening with banks. So this starts with leadership demonstrating their commitment and passion to achieve safety excellence. So it is not just about talking safety inside board meetings or meeting rooms. It is demonstrating through personal, visible, felt leadership on the field. So this is where what we have engaged with some of the C-suite is to coach them to observe and visibly demonstrate their commitment through their focus on critical risks and critical controls so that people down the line understand that this safety is a value and not a priority for the boards. An example of one of our clients is the CEO and the chairman very vividly articulated whatever KPIs we set, the people achieve it. So it's not about KPIs, it's about the culture and that culture starts with behaviors. So the leadership embarked on a behavioral program starting with the C-suite, how they should demonstrate their commitment to safety and not look at the safety function as a way to manage safety. So that was a big change that started at the board level down to the C-suite and as it cascaded down, the accountability for safety was shifted from safety function to line management. Why this is happening is because when we reviewed some of the discussions that is happening at the senior leadership and board level, the discussions usually revolve around what happened in the past. It's like looking at the rearview mirror. So the approach that we have recommended to the boards and C-suite is to start looking at the forward plan, ensure there is a strategy, an annual plan, and review is focused on what we are doing today to prevent a fatality or a catastrophic incident tomorrow. The key takeaway that we were able to provide to many of our clients is most leaders have a good intent. But in order to translate that intent into commitment, they need to have personal actions, which includes behaviors. <laughs>